11, we have a picture. We see the Earth right in the center of the screen, over. Roger, Houston, Apollo 11. Calling in from about 130,000 miles out. And uh, we'll zoom our camera in slowly uh, to get the most magnification we can. Uh, over. Roger. Eleven Houston, uh, the uh, uh, definition is uh, pretty good on our monitor here. The color's not too uh, varsity, at, at least on this set. Uh, could you describe what you're uh, looking at? Over. Roger, you're seeing Earth at uh, we see it uh, at our left hand window, just a little more than a half Earth. Uh, we're looking at uh, the eastern. Pacific Ocean, and the north half of the top half of the screen, uh, we can see uh, North America, Alaska, United States, Canada, Mexico, and Central America. South America becomes invisible just off beyond the Terminator or inside the shadow. We can see uh, the oceans with uh, a definite blue cast. See white bands of major cloud formations across the Earth, and can see coastlines. Pick out uh, the western U.S., San Joaquin Valley, the Sierra Mountain Range, the peninsula of Baja California, and can see some cloud formations over uh, southeastern U.S. There's one uh, definite uh, mild storm southwest of Alaska. looks like about uh, 500 to 1,000 miles. And another uh, very minor storm showing uh, the south end of the screen near the, uh, oh, a long way south of the equator, probably, uh, 45 degrees or more south latitude. You can pick out uh, the, ground, the browns uh, in the landforms pretty well. The greens do not show up very well. Uh, some green showing uh, along the uh, northeastern, northwestern coast of the United States and uh, northwestern coast of Canada. Uh, Roger, Levin, it. Uh Pretty good picture on clarity here. We're having. Uh, can you tell us? Uh, it appears to us that there are two distinct uh, uh, cloud formations uh, trending uh, east-west. One approximately about along the equator, and one around uh, 30 or so uh, south latitude. Uh, is could you tell us exactly where those cross the the uh, land masses are? Oh, uh, yes, they. They cross uh, just uh, south of, uh, of uh, the lower part of Mexico, probably through Central America. That is the equatorial band, which we assume to be the intertropical convergence zone. The other band, which is about 30 south, correctly seems to uh, appear to join uh, 
equator at the far left or just beyond the horizon on the left edge of Earth, or at least looks like it's going to join it. We don't have an explanation for that banding. Uh, Roger, Neil. Thank you. Uh, it also appears that uh, just to the uh, left of the Terminator, up in the northern hemisphere, there's a, a cloud band trending, uh, a, a gap in the clouds trending uh, northwest, southeast. It appears to us that that comes in uh, about over the northern United States, or perhaps the central United States. Is that about correct, over? Uh, I can uh, see on the monitor the thing you're talking about, but right now I can't get my eye to the window to pick out uh, just where it crosses the uh, shoreline. Roger. Uh, you guys are doing a good job. It's a real steady picture here. Where uh, uh, clarity is uh, excellent. Uh, the color, uh, it's uh, the clouds are, the whites are distinct. Uh, the rest of it looks like a, to me anyway, on the monitor I'm observing is a, uh, a fairly uh, uh, greenish blue is the way I describe it. Over. It appears that the... Well, we can't observe, uh, we can't appear, observe much green from the spacecraft. Uh, Roger. Uh, on this monitor, the land masses uh, appear to be just a darker uh, a grayish color rather than a brown. Well, it's uh, true that uh, we do not have the depth of color at this range uh, that we enjoyed at 50,000 miles out. However, the oceans still are a definite blue, and uh, the the uh, continents are uh, generally uh, brownish and cast, although it it is true that they're uh, tending more toward gray now than they, they were at the closer ranges. Uh, Roger, 11. We've been, uh, I've just been vectored to another monitor, and uh, sure enough, the browns are coming in a lot more distinctly on the uh, four that we have up on our uh, screen in the control center over. Okay, uh, world, hold on to your hat. I'm going to turn you upside down. Eleven, that's a pretty good roll there. Ah, that's pretty sloppy. Sorry, let me try that one again. You'll never beat out the Thunderbirds. Uh, Apollo 11, Houston, that practice did you some good. It's looking a uh, real smooth roll there. Oops, spoke too soon. All right, making myself seasick doing it, Charlie. I'll just put you back right side up where you belong. Roger. You don't get to do that every day. Uh, Eleven, uh, Houston, uh, could you describe, uh, from your view, uh, the uh, polar cloud cap appears to us to uh, extend uh, down the western coast of uh, North America? Uh, would you would you estimate how far it ex uh, extends down over? Trying to 
fit everybody into the window. It appears that the cloud cap comes down uh, a little bit below uh, the southern extremity of Alaska. Roger. We've, uh, 11, we've lost our picture here now. Okay, uh, Apollo 11, Houston, we've got the picture back now. Unfortunately, we only have one uh, window that uh, has a view of the Earth, and it's filled up with the TV camera, so uh, your view now is probably better than ours is. Roger, we copy. Uh, 11, uh, Houston, uh, if you could uh, comply, we'd uh, like to see uh, some smiling faces up there. If you could give us some interior views, I'm sure everybody would like to uh, see you over. Okay, we'll uh, reconfigure the TV for that. Roger. Apollo 11, Houston, uh, appears to us that uh, we're seeing a view from outside plus a little of the uh, of the inside. It appears you've taken the camera away from the left window. Now over. That's correct. We're uh, moving it back and uh, reconfiguring for uh, interior lighting. Roger. Uh, we can still see the earth uh, through the left window, and it appears that uh, we can see a floodlight uh, off to the left, either that or some sun shafting through the hatch window. It's a floodlight. Ah, uh, now we're coming in. Uh, can't quite make out who that is. That's big Mike Collins there. Well, you got a little bit of... Yeah, hello there, sports fans. You got a little bit of me, plus Neil's in the center couch, and Buzz is doing the camera work this time. Uh, Roger, uh, it's a uh, little dark uh, now, Levin. Uh, maybe a, a bigger F-stop might help. Yeah, that's in work. It's getting a lot better now, Levin. Uh, Mike, you coming in uh, five by. I got a good. Well, I put on a coat and tie if I'd known about this ahead of time. Is uh, Buzz holding your cue cards for you over? Cue cards have a no. We have, we have no intention of competing with the professionals, believe me. We are very comfortable up here, though. We do have a happy home. Uh, there's plenty of room for the three of us, and uh, I think uh, we're all learning to find our favorite little corner to, uh, to sit in. The zero G is very comfortable, but uh, 
After a while, you get to the point where you sort of get tired of rattling around and banging off the ceiling and the floor and the side, so you, uh, you tend to find a little corner somewhere and put your knees up or something like that to wet yourself in, and that seems more at home. Uh, Roger, it looks like uh, Neil is coming in five by there. Uh, Eleven, uh, Mike, see you in the background. Uh, the, the definition is uh, really outstanding. The uh, colors are good. Uh, it's a real good picture we're getting here. The Commander Armstrong. Uh, we, uh, when you, uh, Buzz, when you take the camera over towards the uh, window with the sun chanting through it, sends to a uh, uh, blanket out, though. Yeah, Neil's standing on his head again. He's trying to make me nervous. Uh, Roger. He's disappearing up into the tunnel, of course, uh, as he was going into the litter module only backwards. Uh, Roger, we can see portions of the LAB now, the systems test meter panel, uh, in the lower part of the picture, or we did have it anyway. Okay, and then directly behind his head are our optical instruments, the sextant and the telescope that we used to take uh, sightings with. Uh, Roger, copy, and we see the disc key flashing with a 651. In fact, we can read registers 1 and 2 quite clearly. Yeah, the old high gain uh, angle telling us which way the Earth is. Uh, copy. That's a beautiful picture. Clarity is out of We can also give you the time of day and. Uh, in our system of mission elapsed time, elapsed time, 34 hours, 16 minutes, and umpteen seconds. Roger. Can you see that uh, clearly enough, Charlie? Uh, Roger, Apollo 11. We can see it counting up every t uh, every second. Uh, we got 34.17.02 uh, now. Okay, back to the high gain angles. Uh, Roger. Swing amp. And we've amputated those. Houston, uh, it's, uh, we have a beautiful rainbow there, and as you move the camera around, uh, actually, uh, that looks like a star chart coming into view now, over. Yeah, those are both of two star charts that he uh, is using right now as sunshades over the uh, right-hand window, window number five. Uh, Roger, we see the sun shining in through it behind him and uh, plotting out the uh, uh, equator, uh, correction, the ecliptic plane and uh, the stars that you're using for the navigation. You're right. He doesn't really need the chart. He's got to memorize it just for show. So we got the... Well, we're uh, pointing up in this direction. We see out our side windows the sun going by, and, of course, out one of our windows right now, we've got the Earth. Now, right behind my window, of course, we have the sun, because the sun is illuminating the uh, star chart that we see. This line represents the ecliptic plane, and uh, these lines, vertical lines, represent our uh, reference system that uh, the spacecraft is using at this time. As we approach the moon, uh, the moon will gradually grow larger and larger in size, and eventually it will be in the uh, eclipse. It will be eclipsing the uh, sun as we go behind it. We approach the uh, lunar orbit insertion maneuver. Uh, Roger, Eleven. Uh, we've. Uh, could you attempt a little bit better fo focus there, Eleven? Over.
Alpha 11 Houston, uh, that's uh, a lot better on the star chart now. We can uh, make out the ecliptic plane and the uh, the planets and the the sun and the moon as it uh, as they're drawn at various places uh, throughout the ecliptic plane. Over. Okay, Charlie. If we can uh, get some of the wires untangled here, we'll uh, give you a demonstration of how easy push-ups are up here. Evan Roger. Ah, get the deal buzz there. When it gets pretty hard doing it that way, why we just roll over and do it the other way? Ah, uh, right, we copy. Couldn't figure out whether that was a chin up or a push up. Just take your choice, I guess. Well, looks like it's probably bound with your dinner time down there, Earth. We'll uh, show you our food cabinet here in a second. 11, Roger. Eleven Houston, we see a box full of goodies there, over. Oh, we really have them, Charlie. We got all kinds of good stuff. We've got coffee up here in the upper left, and uh, various uh, breakfast items, uh, bacon uh, in little small bites, and uh, beverages like uh, fruit drink. And over in the center part, we have uh, oh, all kinds of things. Let me pull one out here and see what it is. Right. Would you believe you're looking at uh, chicken stew here? All you have to do is three ounces of hot water for five or ten minutes. Now we get our our hot water out of a little spigot up here with a, uh, a filter on it that, that filters any gases that may be in the drinking water out. And uh, we just stick the, uh, the end of this little tube in the end of the spigot and uh, pull the trigger three times for three ounces of hot water and then mush it up and uh, slice the end off it. And there you go, beautiful chicken stew. Sounds delicious. Yeah, the food so far has been very good. Uh, we couldn't be happier with it. Roger. The surgeons are saying thank you there for that. And uh, it is sort of down in a dark corner, so uh, we have a flashlight here to, to help us uh, see things. And uh, if I can let go of it carefully, it'll uh, just hold itself right where it is. Ah, Roger. As long to disturb it, Will. Apollo 11, you said it's a pretty good demonstration. You started off really stable there, Mike. It, uh... Well, the problem is, no matter how carefully you let go, uh, you bump it just a tiny little bit and set it in motion, and uh, once in motion, there she goes. Try that again. Uh, it looks uh, fairly stable now with slow rotation.
Well, so much for the food department. I'm going to close up the store down here. Roger, we copy. Uh, Charlie, we checked out the cable lines, and uh, we're thinking we might want to uh, see if we can take the TV into the uh, uh, line with us tomorrow for uh, part of the time. Over. Roger. Good show. Uh, we'd like to see it if uh, it'll reach that far. Over. We'll give it a try. Roger. Sinking into the sack there. Yeah, it's really comfortable. Forgot to give Buzzy Spice right back. Houston, uh, the color is uh, better now. It's coming in. Uh, we could uh, attempt a little bit better focus on it. Uh, uh, there we go. Our focus is uh, a lot better now. We see the eagle uh, coming right in on the lunar surface. Over. Uh, that's very good now. Houston, that's very good now. We can see the Earth in the background, Apollo 11, and the Eagle coming in. Probably pretty hard to see the olive branch. Uh, Roger, it is. Well, that's what he has in his talent, is an olive branch. Copy.
Apollo 11 Houston, uh, we're really impressed with the clarity and the detail that we have in the picture. The, the colors are, uh, now it's a really an excellent picture now that I'm looking at on our monitor, which is about 12 seconds before the uh, networks uh, can uh, get it out due to the uh, conversion that we have here on our TV converter. The, uh, we're looking at the uh, uh, controls and display, the main display console, and we can see the uh, disk uh, up on the, the panel. Over. Eleven Houston, Houston. We just lost our pick. I see we're going back outside now. Over. Eleven Houston, you copy over. All right, do we copy? And. Uh Thank you very much, Al. Huh? 